Today I have with me a very special guest uh, in the studio uh, called as the Indian Tal something which uh, you are not very happy with yeah the name do you like indian tal why you are insulting tal <laughs> <laughs> yes but uh, somehow your games are really amazing sacrifices and also we really enjoy watching them so today i have ratnakaran uh, in the studio he is an im from kerala and you have uh, how many gm norms two two gm norms and Uh, one of the most entertaining players in indian chess and today he has obliged us by coming to the studio and showing us some of his most exciting games so uh, ratnagaran which is the first game that we'll look at um game with wokaro okay so it was the game with wokaro and why is that game so special one of my best games it's one of your best games yes. and you were black yes So one question which I have always had is why do you always play the French? It's like your favorite opening. Last eight years I'm playing this. What to do? <laughs> what to do? <laughs> <laughs> You're not prepared some some Sicilian because Sicilian might suit your style. Yeah, your aggressive style. Yeah, recently I started to play as Sicilian also. Okay. Uh, and what about the fact that opponents can come prepared with the french like they they could look at the theory because they know that you are playing the same opening maximum what will happen i lose <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a nice point yeah that's the worst thing that can happen so you you are not afraid of losing basically sometimes <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is all theory uh has been seen number of times but those days i was uh, unaware of this theory bro uh even this point you are unaware yeah, yeah. 2010 that's 7 yeah. years ago and so is oh, your opponent was sir sergi vokarev who is 2501 and uh, you were 2397 at that point um yeah this is well known and uh, bishop g5 and here knight d4 Yeah. So what was your thinking behind this? Why did you sacrifice? After knight d4, I'm getting minimum three pawns. So, so bishop h2, and you can't go to g1 because of this. Yeah, f1 is met with the knight g3. Beautiful mate. And uh, there was some incident like at this point uh, was Drev looking at your game. Uh, after two three moves. Yeah. Ah, okay. So he was a top six player. Yeah. Dre- Alexi Drev was looking at your game, yeah. and this, and uh, he was the one who had actually sacrificed knight d4 once. Yes, actually I was unaware of the fact. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did he tell you anything after the game? No, nothing. So you checked it out that Drev. No, my friend Pravin Kumar showed me. <laughs> okay, okay. Rook f2, uh, and now threats like knight g3 are coming up. Yeah, knight g3 also queen g3 is coming with some attack. Mhm. Queen g3 or knight g3. And also I have b2 pawn. So four pawns is good compensation. Right. Yeah. And and you were taking absolutely no time for your moves. Everything is forced I think. <laughs> <laughs> knight d5 and yeah, if if you take the knight then he gets I'm losing queen so uh rook rook e7 check. So yeah. you played queen g3 and i think by this time he must be thinking everything is under control because if you take uh, queen into g5 he could take king into h2 yes tell us what he felt when you made this move queen h3 was he shocked uh, that i don't know but uh, most of the 50% of the tournament hall was there in my boat <laughs> <laughs> so this was being played in bhubneshwar bhubneshwar and and uh, how many minutes did you think for this move queen h3 do you remember like no i actually played it very fast queen h3 because i saw after knight d5 ah when he took here uh, on d5 before yeah. playing queen g3 you had seen this idea yeah if knight comes to g- e3 i'll play queen h3 wow nice And so uh, the point is if you take the queen it's an immediate mate the rook defends the bishop so bishop f4 
No, Rook side. <laughs> and if Knight G2, then you have Bishop G3, King G1, Knight F4. Just finish. <coughs> so he played Bishop F5, and you took. And all this is easy for you, yeah. This mating patterns and all. Seeing here how to mate. No, that day I saw everything. <laughs> that day, yeah. But uh, I, I think in general you are tactically very strong. Uh, but my coach always says tactic players are always weak in tactics. <laughs> who, who is your coach? He Sarvan. He Sarvan. Okay. So he says that uh, you are tactical player, but you are weak in tactics. No, no, no. The comment is that. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, can you tell us how you improve your tactics or how can you get such complicated positions? Any? No idea. It's just natural for you. Yes. To play like crazy positions. Because I saw your game uh, yesterday with um, this GM. Uh, Adam Tukhaev. Yes. And it was a very quiet, normal position. And you tried to do something very tactical, or you, I mean, you tried to get some play, yes? No. One stage I tried to play g4, but okay. Because light square bishop was there. So my yeah. idea was to play g4 and bishop c4, taking e6 and attack on f7. But I had to bring my king to g3, so I just stopped there. Ah, okay. But actually, that was a good choice, I think. Right, but in general, you like active positions very much. Yes. Yes, okay. So, we saw, saw this beautiful game with Vokarev after knight f4. He resigned the game because of queen h2, queen f2 mate if you take the knight. Uh, so, we move on to the next game. Which one would you like to see? We have one against uh, Vorobyov and then against Setu Raman and there is also one against Akshat Kamparya. Um, Akshat Kamparya game happened in 2013. Mm. It, it was 9th round or 10th round in that national year. I was losing or draw for the... I won only one game in that premiere. It was... It was this game with, Yeah, Akshat. Okay, but we but you were going to show us this game which uh, which is not there in the database. Yeah, actually, so we can have a look at that game. Yeah. So we have uh, in front of us your game with Akshat Kamparya. You are white, uh, yes. and what is so special about this game? Uh, this I gave one queen sec made a queen sacrifice for just for rook. Just for one rook, you sacrificed the queen. Yeah. Wow. So uh, over here, you already decided that you would sacrifice the queen, yeah? Yeah, because I saw some good attack on king side. Okay. So it started with uh, him playing rook e7 and you playing rook e1. Yes. Knight e5. And now d3 pawn is hanging. Yeah, d3 pawn is hanging. Also, after knight d3, b2 queen and even rook is also hanging. Right. Yeah. But who cares? <laughs> Four. <laughs> this is typical Ratnakaran knight d3 <coughs> and now you took the rook knight b2 and uh, at this point uh, you didn't know what is happening right you were just playing yeah actually uh, I was thinking that in worst case I'll get draw because some sacrifice after rook g7 and rook f e1 is getting your last piece into the attack yes and uh, here there could be some defensive lines with h6. Yeah, h6. But I have all my pieces on the 7th rank. So, So, uh, but he played knight d3, which is natural, attacking your rook. Yes, and it, firstly it is a blunder. And did you calculate until mate here or you just played normal moves? No, rook g7 is 4, so there is no need to calculate. Yeah, okay. Take. Rook e7, king f8, and here I started seeing some nice check meeting nets. If he goes king e8, then there is this pretty mate. Yes. And in the game, he went king g8, <coughs> rook bishop e6, knight f4, and take. G8. 
check h4 mating so now h7 is a mate so queen h8 and you have now three pieces for the queen plus an attack so you're already winning three pieces too yes. much rook f3 king g2 and knight f7 now knight f6 is a forced mate uh, yes but g5 is coming but then also yeah g5 bishop f5 yep just winning so this was a very tricky uh, game that you started off with the move f4 and uh, yes. this is typical ratnakaran move where you take your opponent into a position where he goes wrong you 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 create such chances i mean <clears throat> i wouldn't say it's the best move or something but you create your chances right every time uh, sometimes yes <laughs> okay so uh, let's look at the next game okay uh, which one would you like to see you why are you looking <laughs> there <laughs> okay we have abhijit gupta in the room so maybe we could we could look at his game yeah yeah sure <laughs> so we we have abhijit gupta in the studio now uh, ratnakaran also in here can you come a little inside i think abhijit yeah so uh, this was the game between the two of you uh, and uh, abhijit do you remember anything about this game no i remember that i was not having very good tournament and uh, he's a uh, ratnakaran is a friend mm -hmm. and uh, he remained a friend after this no game. no he he is still a friend <laughs> here of course so I didn't remember before. The, I I mean I didn't know that uh, he had to beat me to make his norm or something. Hmm. But coincidentally, after the game, he was like, "Thanks to you, I made my GM norm." <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, in a way, I was I mean I was not feeling uh, so that bad. well after the game. But uh, once he said that, it was like, "Chalo, ye ye donation kam aega." <laughs> <laughs> And what what do you remember about this game? Right now, nothing much. <laughs> it it was a special game for you yeah first gm no um no 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 <laughs> <laughs> not a special game <laughs> okay so let's uh, have a look at a few moves yeah i mean this is not very standard but uh, if you are playing ratnagar and you can understand like all these are very standard for him but not for the other person <laughs> Yeah. So, you would like to say something? Nothing. Okay. No, let's get to the interesting uh, position so here. I'm. I was not sure. Maybe I could do better with something with knight c5 before. I don't remember exactly how I should play this. Mhm. Mm But this is definitely this not is how I should have. Okay. So e5, e5, d4. is rookie one e4 i think now by now you you might have been thinking that you are having a better position abhijit yeah i mean i have a better position and so, <coughs> so i don't remember exactly how i should continue but uh, somewhere around here i started to lose the plot of the position probably knight f8 is okay rook a5 i mean i could barely understand what he was doing <laughs> i mean Rook a5 looks. I mean, if you look at it, it feels like what Rook is doing on a5. Yeah. Why did you play Rook a5? I'm not remembering. But I think stopping something. <laughs> But c5 is already stopped. Yeah. So. Yeah, maybe stopping Queen b5 something. I don't know. Or maybe. Or maybe a5 Bishop a6. Hmm. Or maybe you wanted to also take on e4 and then your Rook could swing over to the king side. Yeah, maybe. So here I went bishop f5, which I have no idea why did I go g4. Uh, knight d2, and now the knight on g5 is hanging. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I probably here I should take and then go back. 
bishop d7 or something like that. So bishop into you mean bishop bishop into g5, uh, bishop g5 and probably yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember exactly. But uh, oh, it still looks interesting. Yeah, f3 knight e6. Just come back with the bishop, I guess. Yeah. No. No, give up the bishop. No, interesting. F P four, E D five. Yeah, but then just short castle and maybe. Yeah. But it's interesting. <laughs> 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 or maybe first bishop at six. Yeah, just move the bishop somewhere. Yeah. Once, yeah. No, it's definitely interesting. Uh, some knight at four. Probably bishop this side, D two or C one somewhere. Yeah. I mean, it's a position, yeah. It's, it's a position, yeah. but, but I probably I D bishop d7, knight d2. Now I sort of completely overlooked this move, and now. But what happened if you took the knight on g5? Yeah, probably if I take, he takes on e4. And if d, e <coughs> bishop g. Now you see this rook on a5 is working perfectly. <laughs> rook but is coming this, to e5. this surprisingly, this position. Uh, he has full compassion, maybe he is already better. Because I don't see how to. Knight e6, maybe, you know? Yeah, you knight e6, you just queen e4 also. Mm -hmm. Sort of unpleasant. I mean, he has many moves. He can just also play bishop h6, knight e6, bishop h6, and. I mean, I can't castle this side. You just rook a1 comes and. But isn't it amazing the rook on a5 is now perfectly placed? Yeah, surprisingly, placed. exactly. I mean, that's what I'm, I say of his game. Sometimes he can be so tricky that. When he played this rook a5, I was wondering like, what the, what the hell is going on? But you see, after like three four moves, now uh, I mean it's the best place piece for white yeah. on the board. So how how do you call this? What sort of a quality is this? I don't understand. I think it's more sort of intuitive. Hmm. Uh, he feels for such kind of position, and he just knows, yeah, this piece belongs to this kind of position. So which is very rare to have. I mean, in our hyper modern chess because. Nobody plays like this, you know. But um, he has got this feel of, you know, f of initiative, which is actually uh, uh, can take him a very long way. Yeah. yeah, very strong. I asked him uh, how does he find such moves, and he says, uh, "I don't know." Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what he says. So it's still the same. Yeah, you don't know how moves come to you. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ask to any chess players, I mean, inc probably including you, some moves you just play and you just don't know why it happened. Yes, but okay, most of the times you are looking for some logic behind your moves. Um, but maybe for Ratnakaran, it happens more often that he he just makes moves like no, than other for players. I think he's very intuitive player. Like there were many players like that. Like uh, uh, I remember uh, some of the old uh, Tal's sacrifices, like. Yeah, he would just give up something and then play. Yeah, normally, which, which is been quite uh, prominent in this game of Ratnagar. Right. He gives up the piece. He plays some random move, rook a5. Now rook comes to e5. He gives up a piece on e4, and now everything is making sense. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> so that's that's why I like to call him Indian Tal. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Very close. He's very close. <laughs> <to that. laughs> okay, but he doesn't like it very much. Okay, so. Queen c7 you played, I think you figured out. Uh, yeah, this is already, I think, quite bad for me, but I have simply no. I mean, I don't know what to do anymore. Like, probably I should have gone long castle here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, still looks, looks very bad. Very yeah, bad, just yeah. probably queen a6, knight c5, some, something will come. Yeah. Oh, queen a6, bishop f4 is just over, I guess. Something like that, I don't know. But it looks quite disaster for me. g5. I think my original idea was to play bishop g7, but uh, why I didn't go there? Maybe knight c5. Knight yeah. c5, yeah, just knight c5, yeah. Yeah, as I was saying, like it was, I was not having a very good tournament, <laughs> and he just exploded on it. Yeah, and yeah, now it's already. I mean, I'm not even a pawn up. My king is uh, uh, worse. My stru pawn structure is bad, like, and he managed to convert quite well, I think here. Um, yes, and now some and difficult, uh, very beautiful tactics uh, come in. Yeah, I mean now it's just, yeah, it's, I resign. Yeah. Yes. So, 
So this was a nice game. Uh, yeah, yeah, very nice way. game for him. I mean, uh, some of the concept he showed during, I mean, at least during the game, I did not understand. But later, I could figure it out that okay, this one had this logic, this one has that logic. But uh, this is like another quality of him. Like he can just play some random moves, and you not understand what it is, but slowly you'll, you'll get to know. Like okay, this belongs to this square. So intuitively, maybe he just thought oh, yeah. of it in advance. And even after the game, when you ask him, he always smiles and says, uh, "I don't know" or something like that. Nee, no, that is the another good quality <laughs> of his. That uh, whatever his result is, he'll always have this smile. <laughs> and uh, whatever you ask, he'll be like uh, happily he'll be answering whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, that's why I asked. Uh, I asked him, "Why do you sacrifice all these pieces?" And he says. Uh, what's wrong in that? And I said you might lose. And he said that's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> that I might lose. So yeah, amazing. Yeah, and I also appreciate very much Abhijit your quality. That uh, win or lose, you always like to analyze chess. Uh, you ga- you lost this game also in the first round. You drew, yet you came to our studio and spoke with us. So uh, how how do you do you develop this habit? Like I mean habit? if. you would all the people would know this that uh, if you like if you like doing something it doesn't matter i mean whether i'll be going back to my room and i'll be analyzing as well but uh, if i have somebody some company it's better to always analyze with a human being than a machine sure and uh, uh, coming back to you uh, you were doing also a story at 12:30 in the night the other day <laughs> so what makes you you know go f- Like you work so hard and still you'll have the same smile, you know, same enthusiasm at night twelve thirty. Yeah, I th- <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you 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 are uh, asking me questions, yeah, uh, interviewing me <laughs> for a change. No, uh, I think uh, the <coughs> main thing is that we all love chess, and when you do something you love, you don't feel very tired. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But uh, I am a chess player, so I know that when I lose a game. at that point uh, the feeling of sadness is much more than the tiredness that you do uh, while writing so that's why i appreciate both of you guys uh, for you know your a- attitude of uh, taking defeats in your stride thank you so uh, thanks a lot abhijit uh, i would also uh, uh, yeah once again i wish to add one more story very good but yeah. i will tell yeah that lucknow incident After uh, penalty man round, we were analyzing one position. Yeah, it was like uh, I don't know how long ago it was. Like thirteen years. Okay, so you can imagine. Yeah, two thousand four it was, and oh, thirteen years ago. Yeah, there was this uh, pillow modi. Pill some op- pillow modi open in Lucknow, and uh, so I mean I know him like since uh, I don't know forever, <laughs> almost fifteen twenty years. So that time. Uh, I remember, like, I used to have the same attitude as I have now. Like, whatever the result is, we used to analyze. And uh, for some reason, in this room, like, there were always chess boards, and there would be always some people <laughs> who will be analyzing. And so, we were just analyzing some random position, like one of our games. And uh, it came about. I think the last position was like queen knight versus queen. And I was trying to defend with the queen, and he had queen knight. He was trying to mate me there. And the very next day, we were paired. And we got the same position, but I had queen knight and he had queen. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> so it Did you came. Him? No, it came handy w- to him that <laughs> <laughs> for both of us, I guess. <laughs> Actually, I have read somewhere that when you analyze some position, it's possible that you get it very soon. Like if you have analyzed bishop knight mate or let's say rook bishop versus rook, then those positions do occur in your game very soon. No, it's no, it's not like that. It's about it's, it has to do with. Uh, Let's say you are analyzing some rook end game, and there are some middle game position which you think that this is really safer if I go into such kind of end game because I have already studied it. So in the back of your mind, you will know that if you have analyzed this, it's mm. better to go into <laughs> such position because there are less th- chances to go wrong. So that's why it comes like over and over again such kind of uh, situations. Sure. So Abhijit, now that you are here, and uh, because we are analyzing Ratnakaran's game, and he doesn't talk much. So I would like you to stay here and see one more game okay. if that is fine with you. It's okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh. <laughs> okay. So we have uh, the position in front of us between Setu Raman, who is black, and Ratnakaran, who is white. And Ratnakaran, last move you made is Rook D5. 
Yes. Yes. Just like rook a5 in your game with Abhijit, you play, you plonked the rook in the center of the board. What's your idea? Might be rook f5 only. No, I'm sure like he was already looking at rook f5. It doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. <laughs> I'm going to take this bishop and then let's see. Yeah? <laughs> As I said, like he was, he is very intuitive player in such kind of position at least. For me, like I have to actually be completely sure whether it works or not. But for him, he just feels for it. You know, he just feels that okay, it it, it is good. Right. So b6 was played here. Yeah, and uh, you took on f5, gf5. By the way, the importance of this game is that it was the last round of national b 2013. Yes. And if whoever wins qualifies to national premier. And Setu had good chances actually yes. to qualify because he's already had eight and a half and here he was better. But uh, okay, so... Objectively better but practically I don't think it's so easy to play with black. I mean it's e much easier to play with white, yeah, such kind of position. But no. <laughs> I guess some attack is there, that's so. Yeah, yeah, knight g5. So knight g5. But my question is... Uh, what exactly is happening like for example knight g5 i play e6 maybe just defending everything isn't it possible to play something like knight g3 here like e6 knight h5 some also some yeah knight g3 here. looks interesting yeah something like this oh. is interesting but i think uh, ratnakaran wanted to go forward <laughs> <laughs> no, no going back. Yeah, I think he he was going for the kill immediately. Yeah. So he went knight g5. And uh, h6. Yeah. I, I was just wondering e6. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's happening. No, but after e6, queen h5, h6, knight of 3, h6 is... Yeah, h6 hangs, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a nice line. e6, queen, queen h5, h6, knight f3. And then the h6 pawn is hanging. And if king h7, you have minimum knight g5 check and draw. Yeah. But I think it's still not so clear. Yeah, just queen e7 or some move, and come to defend with your queen, queen f6. I mean, white definitely has composition, but I don't think black is worse by any means. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he played h6. <laughs> Queen h5, hg. Now, now you are a full rook down. Yes. <laughs> Bishop g5. So, so what? I mean, some variations must be going in in your head, right? At such at this point, you can't just be playing just by feel. Everything like one rook sack. I can. <laughs> 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 okay, so queen e5, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get some variations out of his his uh, mind, but not so easy, yeah. G4. Yeah. Okay, this is something which is very difficult. Uh, like I have played Ratnakaran, and just when you think everything is under control, he makes a move like g4, and suddenly things are not under control. <laughs> Yeah, he tries to create a chaos over the board and then it's like, it's 50-50, yeah? mm -hmm. <laughs> either it's winning or it's just completely lost. Uh, most of the time he succeeds in winning those positions even when, I mean, objectively probably black is okay here, maybe even better. But it's not easy to find this kind of, uh, uh, you know, practical chances over the board. Especially for your opponent, like when such kind of things happens, uh, when somebody plays G4 or like such kind of stuff comes, uh, you know, during the game, it's not easy to react practically, like yeah. over the board. So, uh, you think you start to think like maybe I have a lot of ways to win, and then you go wrong. Yeah, I mean, That's also now already I think it feels like Black has probably not couple of his probably Black has to be uh, precise, very precise. You know, his mm -hmm. part to victory is very narrow now. So, which can I mean, last round also, you know, qualification for national premier. It's all these things also plays in your mind, so it's Do you ever get nervous, Ratnagar, on the board? Yes. Yes? Off, so off the board, he never gets nervous. <laughs> no, but he is nervous right now because he is in front of the <laughs> camera. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so... 
I think Setu already was not so sure from where your punches are going to come next. So he just went king f8. Mm. Yeah, probably here he would have thought that okay, this wave of attack is over and soon his extra rook is going to. Yeah, know. but this next move is unbelievable. I would say I, I'm looking at this rook on a1 <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, how is it going to come into the game? E1 square is not controlled. D1 means exchange, and you make this move. King h1. You had seen it before. <laughs> You're asking him very tough questions. I mean, be easy. No, at least like when you played g4, you might have seen of king h1, rook g1 ideas. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a very natural follow-up. Like after gf5, I mean, you're you're trying to bring the rook. I mean, this is at least it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it is very natural yeah. for everybody yeah. to understand king h1, rook g1. Whereas in the in like my game with him, rook a5 was just basically <laughs> like. Just attacking my d5 pawn, which was just supported by c6 pawn, so it was stranger than actually, actually what happened. Actually, in the game, actually. you can ask him why did you make this move? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So knight c4, rook g1, and you can see like already probably black is not even winning anymore. Like. Yeah, I mean white. Uh, I think your main threat now is uh, bishop h6. Bishop yeah. h6. No, it's not a threat. Yeah, because king is running away from e8 to d7. Oh. Actually, still there is no threat. You are just building up the attack. Yeah, I mean, if some moves like even rook d2 should be. No, I, I mean, maybe bishop d. Ah, you are okay with giving a rook here? Yeah. yeah. He played knight d2. Yeah, also very natural to bring your ba knight back to e4 and f6. And f3? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I here you knight d6, I don't really see how... Probably just put knight d6 and run away with the king, yeah? King e8, king f7. But same threat is coming, queen g4, is working or not? Queen g4? Yeah. And bishop f4, no, no but king e8? <coughs> Bishop f4 now. Queen d5 check. Ah, so you must play f3, something like this before, yeah? Yeah. Also, like some, I can just play bishop f6 as well here, yeah? Okay, I mean, it's. Yeah. It's the position, I think yeah. it was possible probably to defend too. this way. Yeah, I mean, black probably has a couple of ways. Probably not 92 because. F3 actually F3 is a very nice move. It mm. prevents many thing and this knight is, is not coming back to the game. I can explain this move now. So at least I feel good. You stopping queen d5 check. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's one so, of those moves which. And you can see like black is playing without a plan. Like he bought his knight to d2. Now he doesn't know what to do. Goes rook d6. I mean he's just playing moves. He yeah, yeah. doesn't have concrete idea. And probably here already. Now yeah. if king e8, then bishop f4 is just very strong because there's no yeah, check on d5. That what, that what happened in the game, but is there a defense here or it's already bad? Do you analyze your game after it's over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it has started. No. <laughs> Thanks to your coach. Yes. <laughs> so, so you uh, use your engines to analyze or just like some <laughs> variations on your own? No, if, if I get a chance with uh, coach, I prefer that one. Okay. But do you think engines are ruining chess because your style of play is such that... But I am not playing with engine, yeah. so no problem. But but for preparation, your opponents are using engine. Uh, up, to my, up to 18 or 19 moves, no? Yeah. <laughs> but after that, you can trick them. <laughs> it's quite funny, like you mentioned engines with Ratnakaran's play and all. Alpha Zero also has a similar style of Ratnakaran, yes, yes, yeah? <laughs> yes. I think uh, somewhere you have some style like Alpha Zero. Because you don't care about material, same thing with Alpha Zero as well. Mm, maybe the deep mind did <laughs> some, <laughs> some research on, on your games. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, here probably F6 is a big threat. Yeah, I want to play just F6 and remove the bishop, right? I forgot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. difficult to find a move for Maybe black. Yes, F6. Yeah, because F6, bishop F6, bishop F4, and yeah. then there is a mate on G8. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he panicked probably King E8, and now already. <laughs> And is now suddenly the material is even. Yeah, and this knight on d2. <laughs> and this is what happened in your game also. The material suddenly yeah, yeah, it became even, even, and then position is completely lost. Yeah. yeah. And then he goes into some end game and tries, to, which is very, uh, uh, you know, you feel really sad because you are all the time thinking about the Mate, winning yeah. position. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is just winning now. You just converted it easily. Yeah. And and uh, you qualified for this uh, national premiere. Yeah. I what, how how was Setu Raman after this game? Very sad, yeah. <laughs> Should be. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I I met you after this game uh, at the railway station when you are going back home, and and we spoke a few words about this game, and and uh, you were not very particularly excited about qualifying for national premiere or anything like that. You are just normal, just like how you are right now. Oh, he was excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, it's as I say, it's very difficult to understand his moves, his expressions. He's always calm and cool. So, really, a wonderful player, Ratnagaran. Thanks a lot Thank you. for playing such wonderful games and uh, entertaining us. Keep doing that, and uh, I hope you become a GM soon. Thank you. And thanks a lot, Abhijit, for Thank joining you. us. This was a wonderful session. Thank you, Sagar. Always a pleasure.